and it's an impossible people, and uh, that are quite irresponsible themselves. There, there has been, of course, suggestions over the years of, uh, on, on, the, on the question of partition, of an exchange of Irish neutrality for a solution for partition. There's been a great deal of pressure yes. for Ireland to join NATO. Uh, has that, has that uh, 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 for instance, that, that must have arisen when you, were, when you were foreign minister? Yes, and I think that it could have been possibly the basis for discussion uh, at that period of time. I don't think it is now. I think that uh, the question of trading membership of NATO for reunification of the country wouldn't be acceptable in Ireland anymore. I think that NATO has itself acquired uh, a rather evil reputation, uh, largely because of its uh, actions in helping the Portuguese against Angola in supplying arms to South Africa in collaborating with South Africa, oppressing people in the past of the world. And as well as that, there is very strong anti-nuclear feeling in Ireland. We don't want to be involved in a nuclear war. We think that a nuclear war would be immoral and unjustifiable, and we don't want to be involved in it. So I think that now that uh, this would not be on. In your quest for peace, you've been very optimistic about the power of public opinion, and you said this. There's been a change in the centre of gravity of power from governments to public opinion. Now, what exactly did you mean by that? I think there's been, as a result of higher standards of education and of the electronic media, there's been a change in the centre of gravity of power. I think that public opinion and the people, the ordinary people, are much better informed now than they were. They are much less inclined to accept willy-nilly the viewpoint of their governments. Uh, and they will form their own judgment, their own opinion, and they can exercise more power than they could before. The first concrete example of that was, was Vietnam. I think the Vietnam War was the first example of a full-blown war that was ended by public opinion in midstream. Here again, you're, you're very optimistic that the power of public opinion can stop the nuclear arms race. And certainly we've had enormous demonstrations in America and Europe. But still, it seems, cruise missiles are going to come into this country and into Europe. Now, how has public opinion stopped that? Yes, well, I think, that, you see, first of all, let's analyze it. These demonstrations were huge demonstrations. They've been organized with little or no resources. Merely a few people like me going around the, play, around the world and... and asking people to protest against this and people have reacted to that extent. Now the next